Students, today we are going to see a new chapter called sulfonamides. We will see what is sulfonamide. It is an effective chemotherapeutic agent used for bacterial infection in humans. This um, term sulfonamide no, that is generally used as a generic name for derivatives of para amino benzene sulfonamides. So, what they are? They are derivatives of para amino benzene sulfonamides. Now, we will see the history of sulfonamides. This para amino benzene sulfonamides was synthesized by Gelmo in 1908 as an intermediate in the study of azodice. Then in 1930, research workers of IG Farben industry work on azodi having sulfonamide nucleus. And in 1932, Gerard Domong, he recognized the antibacterial activity of azodi called prontosilrid. Prontosil red was effective in the treatment of hemolytic streptococcal infection and this is inactive in vitro and active in vivo. In 1935, Truffaut at Pasteur Institute discovered that this prontosil breaks down in the tissues into para amino benzene sulfonamides and this is having the antibacterial activity. So, the antibacterial activity is mainly present on this part. This discovery leads to the synthesis of 5500 sulfonamides but only some are in clinical use. The usage of penicillin no that diminished the use of sulfonamides even though it is given in combination with trimethoprim. Now we will see the nomenclature of sulfonamide. So, this is the general structure of sulfonamide. What is that? CH3, SO2, N, R1 and R2 or generally it can be called as SO2, NH2. So, what is sulfonamide? That should have SO2, NH2. So, already we have known what is aniline. Benzene ring with NH2 can be called aniline. So, fusion of sulfonamide with aniline that can be called as sulfanilamide. So, that is called benzene ring NH2 here SO2 NH2 and here we have NH2 no so here one hydrogen is replaced by means of any other group means this would be the basic nucleus for sulfonamide so that is called a sulfanilamido group so what is sulfanilamido group that should have aniline and that is connected with SO2 NH so that is called sulfanilamido group and totally it can be called sulfanilamide and here it is having two nitrogens no here one nitrogen and here one nitrogen this nitrogen can be called as N1 and this one no this can be called as N4 so it is having two nitrogens one is N1 and this one is N4 ok. So, what is that? They are derivatives of para amino benzene sulfonamides and it is having two nitrogens. The nitrogen of SO2 NH2 is numbered as 1 and NH2 that nitrogen is numbered as 4. So, based on this the sulfonamides would be named. So, that is all about the nomenclature of a sulfonamide. Now, we will see the classification of sulfonamides. So, based on the site of action, the sulfonamides are classified into six type, types. The first one is sulfonamides for general infection. Examples are sulfanilamide, sulfapyridine, sulfadiazin, sulfamethosin and sulfamethoxazole. Second one is sulfonamides for urinary tract infections. Examples are sulfisoxazole, sulfathiazole and sulfamethizole. Third one is sulfonamides for intestinal infections. Examples are thalyl sulfathiazole, succinyl sulfathiazole and sulfasalazine. Fourth one is sulfonamides for local infections. Examples are sulfazitamide, mephinide and silver sulfadiazin. Fifth one is sulfonamides for dermatitis. Examples are dapsone and sulapsone. The last one is sulfonamide combination. It is given in combination with trimethoprim that is trimethoprim with sulfamethoxazole. The sulfonamides are classified on the basis of pharmacokinetic properties into three types. First one, first one is poorly absorbed sulfonamides. They are otherwise called locally acting sulfonamides. These are poorly absorbed in GIT and mainly used to treat intestinal disease or to reduce luminal bacterial population prior to bowel surgery. Examples are sulfasalazine, thalyl, sulfathiazole. Second one is rapidly absorbed and excreted sulfonamides. They are otherwise called systemic sulfonamides. Examples are sulfamethoxazole, sulfisoxazole, and sulfadiazine.
Third one is topically used to sulfonamides. They are mainly applied in burns, conjunctival sac, aortic canal and vagina to treat bacterial infection examples mephinite sodium, sulfacetamide and silver sulfadiazin. On the basis of chemical classification, the sulfonamides are classified into four types. First one is N4 substituted sulfonamides. They are prodrugs. And examples for that is prontosil and sulfaguanidin. Second one is N1 substituted sulfonamides. Examples sulfadiazin, sulfacetamide, and sulfadiamidin. Third one is both N1 and N4 substituted sulfonamides. Examples succinyl sulfathiazole, thalyl sulfathiazole. And the last one is non aniline sulfonamides. Example mephinite sodium. On the basis of pharmacological activity, the sulfonamides are classified into antibacterial agents. Example sulfadiazin and sulfizoxazole. Oral hypoglycemic agents. Example stolbutamide, glycoside, and glipicide. Then diuretics, examples of erosimide, bumitanide, chlorid, thalidone. In the treatment of dermatitis, example, dapsone. Used as an anticonvulsant, example, ethoxolamide. And antiretroviral agent, example, amprenavir, delaviridin. On the basis of duration of action, the sulfonamides are classified into four types. They are ultra short acting, long acting, intermediate acting, and short acting. Now we'll see ultra short acting. Here the half life is greater than 50 hertz. Example sulfur salicin and sulfalene. Next one is long acting. Here the half life is greater than 24 hertz. Example self methoxidiazin and sulfur dimethoxin. For intermediate acting sulfonamides, the half life is between 10 to 24 hours. Examples are sulfazomazole, sulfamethoxazole. The last one is short acting sulfonamides here. The half life is less than 20 hours. Examples sulfamethazole and sulfazoxazole.